Welcome to Tom's Tech Notes. This video shows why I consider the Shure SM35 mic to be the best microphone for recording and editing videos and shows how to connect the SM35 to a computer. The Shure SM35 mic was designed for musicians but it is ideal for narrating or editing home videos with a desktop or laptop computer. After using several mics over the years, the SM35 is by far my mic of choice. The SM35 mic is small, so it doesn't obstruct your face while you're facing the camera. If you're using it at a computer to read from the computer while dictating, it doesn't obstruct your view of the computer screen. It keeps a constant distance from your mouth as you move your head, which keeps the volume constant. The SM35 is lightweight and comfortable, suitable for long recording or editing sessions. The sound quality of this mic is excellent and the output level is fine for recording and editing videos. It records all sounds faithfully, including speech and music. Because its strap is behind your head, you can wear headphones with the mic while editing. The SM35's audio quality is similar to that from large studio mics, such as the Blue Yeti, but the SM35 is far more convenient to use for the reasons just given. To use the wireless SM35 mic, you connect the mic to the transmitter which you put on your back or under your clothes. Then you connect the wireless receiver to the computer with the X2U adapter. Next, we'll show you how to connect the SM35 mic to the computer. After that, we'll describe the other microphones I tried before choosing the SM35 and show how they're connected to the computer. Here are the parts required to connect the wired SM35 to the computer. The wired SM35 mic and the RPM 626 preamp cost $149. The wireless SM35, not shown, with the transmitter and receiver cost $450. To connect either version to your computer, you use an XLR to USB adapter. This is the X2U adapter from Shure. This is the MXL MicMate Pro. They each cost $99. And then those adapters are connected to your computer with a cable to a USB port. The mic plugs into the preamp and the preamp can plug directly into the adapters, the XLR connector or you can connect them with an XLR cable, and that cable can be up in the neighborhood of 100 feet long if you need it. Unfortunately, my X2U adapter has a bad ground connection in the connector to the XLR cable. And if you move the connection at all while recording, you record loud popping sounds. You can mitigate the problem if you connect these two with a cable and you crimp the connector on the cable slightly before you connect it to the adapter. You can eliminate the problem if you strap the adapter and the end of the cable down onto a board so the connection cannot move, but that cuts down the portability and the ease of setup. The same bad ground problem has been reported by several others on the internet. The MXL adapter does not have a bad ground problem. And it's light enough so you can plug it directly into the preamp and clip them both onto your belt. And then connect to your computer with your USB cable. Remember, USB cables are limited to 10 feet long. So if you need to be further away, you're going to have to connect the adapter to the preamp with a longer XLR cable. Some other differences. The X2U has a, an indicator that flashes red when the microphone gain is set high enough to cause clipping. There's no such indicator on the 
MXL adapter. It just has a green power indicator. Also, if you're going to leave it connected to your computer for extended periods of time and you want to turn off power to the preamp and microphone, there is a switch on the X2U adapter to turn off phantom power. There is no switch on the MXL adapter. So to get around that problem so you can turn off power while leaving it connected to your computer, use an extension USB cable that has a switch built in. But be careful to purchase the type of extension cable that shuts off both the power and the data because the other type of cable does not work. Here are some mics I've used previously. Gaming headsets. These are headphones with an attached microphone. I've tried several Logitech models. This is the H540. It costs $30, is well made, and is convenient to use, but the microphone sound is harsh. Also, the microphone output level is too low for videos, and you must amplify it before use. I use the H540 headphones for monitoring when I edit videos, but I don't recommend most headphone mics when audio quality is important. The H540 headphones connect to the computer with the USB port. Standalone mics. These are available in all prices and qualities. This Blue Yeti USB stereo mic has excellent sound and it has a built-in preamp. The audio output level is fine for videos. Standalone mics can be used with a desk stand, but sensitive standalone mics like this one should be mounted on a floor stand or an adjustable boom to avoid picking up vibrations conducted through your desk from computers, fans, or disk drives. The pop filter keeps puffs of air or spit from striking the mic. The Blue Yeti mic, boom, and pop filter cost around $170. You must keep standalone mics at a constant distance from your mouth while speaking. This large mic can block your view while you are narrating or editing videos especially if you're reading a script from one monitor while performing actions that you're recording on the other monitor. It can also distract your video viewers or hide your face when you're facing the camera. It takes a while to transfer the mic from the boom to a desk stand for use elsewhere. I recommend this mic for recording quality audio if you can put up with limitations just described. This mic plugs into a USB port on your computer. As mentioned earlier, the SM35 mic is my mic of choice. I use the wired version, but it is also available as a wireless mic. This is the first video in this playlist. This video shows how to attach the microphone and headphones to your desk so they can be easily used with your computer and can be easily removed for use away from your computer. This video shows how to set the Windows recording level and microphone gain for the Shure SM35 mic and other mics that have preamps. It also shows how to set the Windows recording level for mics that do not have preamps. If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, please like it and please leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website. You can also click links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click the thumbnail at upper left to watch other videos related to this one. Click at lower left to watch a video specially recommended for you. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, please click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.